Sonic is blue. Ooh, he has some good games and some not so good games. His first game was Sonic the Hedgehog on Sega Genesis. There's a Game Gear Master version too. Even though Sonic was designed for the Genesis, Sega released an 8-bit version for their previous console, the Master System. Yeah, Sega had a console before the Genesis. Yes, this is real, and it's still being sold in Brazil for some reason. It was also on the Game Gear, which is the way most people played the 8-bit Sonic 1. 8-bit Sonic 1 is completely different from Sonic 1 on the Genesis. I mean, of course it is. The Genesis is way more powerful than the Master System in Game Gear. I will mostly look at the Game Gear version since it's the most common. And both versions are very similar, only with a few differences, like some of the sprites are different, some of the levels are slightly changed, the Master System version has a bigger screen, and Sonic having no nose in the Game Gear version. So this game starts off with, wait for it, Green Hill Zone. This, this game follows the same plot as the Genesis version with Sonic having to stop Dr. Robotnik from doing evil things and seeing the six Chaos Emeralds. There are only six at this point. To get to the Chaos Emeralds, you need to find them in the levels. There are special stages. To get to the special stages, you need 50 rings and then reach the end. The special stages only have rings, no emeralds, but you can at least try to get extra lives. This zone looks similar to its 16-bit counterpart with a few differences. Obviously, it's an 8-bit. In this game, when you get hit, you can't pick up your rings, which can make some zones difficult. This game has 3 acts, but only the first 2 acts are levels. The third act is just a boss with no rings, which can make the bosses harder than they need to be. Or maybe I'm just bad at this game. So we beat Dr. Kentober and go to the next zone called the Bridge Zone. Most zones in this game are different from the 16-bit version. Like only three zones from the 16-bit version are in this game. Those being Green Hill Zone, Labyrinth Zone, and Scrap Brain Zone. So it's good they chose the best zones to die a lot in. This game doesn't really have a lot of parts where you can go fast. It's mostly just standard platforming. Act 2 is an auto-scroller. Yes, there is an auto-scrolling level in the Sonic game. Other than that, this level is good. This level's fine. I like how it looks with all the trees and stuff, but here you do a lot of vertical platforming. Also, since I'm playing the Game Gear version, I can't really see where I'm about to jump to and can't see some obstacles. So if you're playing the Master System version, you could, you'll probably have a little bit of an easier time playing this game as you have a bigger screen and all that stuff. But don't worry, because the next zone is the Labyrinth Zone. I love this game. The zone is very boring when you're not dying. You move so slow when underwater. Some of the air bubbles just don't appear when you need them to, which makes this level even harder than it already is. I died at this boss like 50 times. This isn't as difficult as a 16-bit version as there are only two acts and the acts are short, but this stage can be a real challenge. Next is the other stage from the 16-bit Sonic 1. Scrap Brain Zone. Very epic. I'm starting to wonder why they, why they brought only these three zones to this version. Act 1 is alright, but Act 2 was kind of confusing when I played it for the first time. Act 2 is like a maze where you have to press buttons to open different doors that lead you to the exit. After a while, I figured out how to beat the stage. I mean, just dumb. This is the end of our epic little adventure as we have one more zone called Sky Base Zone. I kept dying to these stupid electric things. After dying like 500 times on Act 1, I got to Act 2, which is a little easier than the first act, but still hard. The final boss is not that hard, as the fire on the ground isn't that hard to, to avoid. We get to Dr. Ego Man, kill him, and then end credits. So this game is short, it takes like an hour to beat this game, and there really is not that much of a reason to play this game as just play the 16-bit version, that's like better and more easier to get to play. It's still interesting to play this game. Oh well, well that's the end of this stupid dumb little video. Okay, bye.